Mother Nature, for all her beauty, is continuously at odds with the very existence of sailboats. The wind will tatter a sail, the sun will bake woods and plastics into brittle, crackled surfaces, water attacks from below and above, quietly seeking any cracks it can penetrate and expand. Rust and galvanic corrosion have just an insatiable appetite for the bits and pieces that keep our boats afloat. So it falls to us, the stewards of our vessels, to do our very best to help our boats withstand the onslaught of Mother Nature over time. And even though Mother Nature always wins in the end, there is still some zen to be found in the repetitive acts of sailboat maintenance. On the one hand, you could get frustrated that the need to clean and oil and paint and scrub and stitch is never ending. On the other hand, you might enjoy the opportunity to quiet your mind and focus on a single task and learn a new skill be out in the elements and find satisfaction in the journey, not the destination. If you have an old sailboat, tell us in the comments below how you feel about boat work. Do you love to paint? Do you hate to paint? Do you like to varnish and refinish? Do you like to wash your boat? Do you like to scrub it? Do you like to change the oil? Do you like to check your water pump? There's so many different things that, that a boat requires you to do annually or semi-annually. I'm just curious, do you love it or do you hate it? We'd love to hear from you below. In today's episode of Zen and the Art of Sailboat Maintenance, I'm gonna be outside uh, working on freshening up the old cockpit. For those of you who don't know, when we bought this boat over a year ago, it was absolutely filthy and the cockpit was no exception. It was full of dirt and grime and trash and uh, just old junk, seagull poop everywhere. But for the past year, we've just kind of been ignoring it. Like we've been using it when we can. When we've gone sailing, we've just, you know, thrown down some cushions and, and uh, hidden it from view. Since the summer's almost over, I wanted to go ahead and, and get out there and see if we couldn't freshen up the cockpit before uh, the winter rains come. I wanna keep most of the teak and wood strips that are already in the cockpit, but the locker lids themselves are just in pretty rough shape. And so I'm gonna strip the teak off of those and see if I can't patch the holes um, with some epoxy and then sand them down and prime and paint them. It's a noisy day here at the marina, but I'm back to continue taking these old teak strips off of the benches here in the cockpit. So as you can see, I've already started one right there. So today we're gonna do this one right here. I just don't think I can save those. There's too many of them that are broke and yeah, I'm gonna take them all off and we're gonna paint it, put some uh, all grip there so we don't slip. And then we're gonna try to save everything, you know, basically here on the edges and on the back. So we'll try to save those and, and keep that as an accent here on the boat. Um, we'll see. But anyway, let's get to taking them out. A lot of these screws are stripped, so I just gotta use like the vice clamps to, to get them out, but pretty straightforward. All right, an easy one. Ooh, metaphor for boat projects. One easy, three hard. <laughs> mix of old glue and dirt that's accumulated over the years is just gross. So I'm gonna see if I can't uh, hose these down and give them a good scrub. Quick side note, so usually it's about now, about an hour or so into a project that I find that like my mind just kind of quiets down and, and I get lost in the task. I'm enjoying being in the sunshine, I'm enjoying the smells of the marina and the salt air and watching the boats rock back and forth and creak. And it's just such a nice, refreshing change from the digital life that is my day-to-day -day mostly. There's a, just a lot of my life that's in, involved with looking at some kind of digital interface. And when I'm doing these kind of projects, it's almost like I, I feel like my life gets balanced in a good way. It's like I'm canceling out some of that digital influence. I guess this is just my PSA to, it, to remind you to get outside and go work with your hands, go work with something analog, pick up some tools, pick up some wood, do something, anything that isn't digital, the more you know. I'm gonna make a little epoxy. This West System epoxy resin and hardener are super easy to pump out in the right ratios. 
I'm going to mix in some of the microfibers as well into this epoxy and I'm going to thicken it up to make it easier to apply. The hinges on the locker lid left some pretty big holes in the cockpit. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply some of this epoxy paste, applying pressure with the spatula to fill up all the old screw holes and then go through and wipe off the excess or scrape off the excess. But just basically trying to get all these voids filled with this paste. While I'm here and I've got this excess, I'm going to go ahead and start filling up some of these holes because I know I'm going to have to sand off this top anyway, so I might as well use some of this stuff and just start filling in some of these suckers. Once I had the holes filled up, I took off the lids and moved them off the boat. I didn't think it was smart to leave these locker spaces just open to the elements. So I brought some pieces of scrap wood from the house and just kind of went about temporarily covering them up. Last thing I want is to come back and find a, a seagull that's made a nest down inside the boat. Once I had the lids home, I suited up and got busy sanding. I used an orbital sander for most of this, a little bit of hand sanding here and there, but the orbital sander made pretty quick work of this. All that excess glue came off pretty easy, but I realized pretty quickly that I hadn't put enough epoxy in the screw holes and I needed to apply another coat, as well as uh, the sanding revealed a bunch of small cracks here and there on the sides and lid that would benefit from also getting filled with epoxy. So we did one more coat of epoxy and sanding to get the lids ready. All right, so first I'm gonna prime these lids with uh, Total Boat's topside primer. It's single coat coverage, and so I'm hoping I don't have to put on more than one coat for this. My, my plan is to do a coat of primer, then a coat of topside paint, and then do a coat kind of, I'll mask off a rectangle in the middle, then I'll do the, the all grip in the middle. All right, so it says to make sure it's stirred up nicely. This is also supposed to be fast curing, so uh, it says about an, in about an hour at 90 degrees it uh, will be dry and ready for a sand and, a, and another application. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes today. It's not terribly thick. I am probably going to do two coats of this though. I don't want to take a chance on having any of these discolorations seep through the wood. Not the wood rather, but the fiberglass. This is a fiberglass top. It's only good to be doing this outside. It definitely has a smell. Let's give this a light sand and get ready for the next coat of primer. Probably really hard to tell, but it's a nice flat white finish, the primer. I gave it a quick sand and now I'm going to hit it with this uh, white topside paint. We'll see how that looks. It'll probably, to the camera, it will probably still look white. <laughs> like, Probably won't be able to see a big difference on camera, but regardless, let's give this a go. Whoa. Can't see very well because it's so bright, but yeah, this white was nice. A single coat covered basically, I mean, gave it full coverage and really hid any kind of discolorations or anything like that. I'm gonna let it dry and then do a second coat just for good measure. And then we can uh, apply the, the all grip and get these things back on the boat. All right, so we wanna put the all grip here in the center. So I'm just gonna measure out the edges, tape it off, and then we'll paint in the inside. I thought it would be more coarse. I thought the particles would be thicker, but it's more like a, like a soupy, sandy mix. I was a little skeptical putting on the total tread, but as it dried, you can absolutely see the rough, grippy surface it adds. I'm pretty stoked with how this is turning out. Once they were dry, I took them back over to the boat, removed my seagull nesting preventers, and put them back on. 
They look super fresh and clean, and just generally this is a really nice upgrade to the cockpit. But as I'm looking at the cockpit, I'm realizing that everything would look better if I gave the remaining teak some love and attention that it has been sorely lacking. Mixing up some penafin. What's this called? We're gonna prep the wood by mixing up some hard wood first step prep. Basically, just, this just opens up the grain of the wood so it can accept the marine oil when we put that on. And put it in about a cup. Let's get this stuff to mix up. The instructions say to brush it on. So just kind of liberally apply this all over the cockpit. And basically, about the time I'm finishing up, uh, the instructions say to go back in and rinse it all off. So. I just took the hose and just kind of liberally just hose it all down once everything had been applied. Even though I'm doing this early in the morning, it's crazy hot in LA right now. Like it's almost 100 degrees. So literally as I'm finishing the hosing down, the cockpit just started to dry out super fast. I, it was incredible to watch this. I could literally see the water evaporating off the teak. I waited a couple of hours to see if it would cool down and it didn't. So I went ahead and began the uh, application of this Penafen Marine Oil, which I really love. The teak looks even brighter after I'd rinsed off the wood prep solution. Um, it's pretty incredible. And then as I start to apply the oil, it just, I just love the look. I love how, I love how this oil looks as you apply it. The color is just super amazing. It's really easy. You just basically brush it on and wipe away the excess as you go. I'm not being terribly precious about the application of the marine oil. It's pretty easy to control as you brush it on. It's just crazy how the wood soaks up the oil. I probably should have done this last year when I got the boat, but better late than never, I suppose. I have to say the cockpit looks a whole lot better. There's still work to be done and you can see that there's slats that need replacing, but generally I'd say this went from being a five out of 10 on the look scale to maybe a solid eight out of 10. And please squint your eyes and just avoid looking at the varnish that's flaking off my slatted Ipe wood floors. Yeah, I need to uh, sand those down and oil those too, but that's a job for another day. And there you have it. Another slice of life in our efforts to keep this old girl from succumbing to the ravages of mother nature and time. If you enjoyed this episode, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment below, subscribe if you like. Uh, we'd love for you to follow us on our journey with old sailboats and learning how to sail and some coastal cruising adventures. Uh, this has been an incredible basically year and a half since we started this process. We've come so far and we've learned so much about sailboats. It's just, it's, it's so cool. There's so much to learn. It'll take years and years and years before, you know, I would be able to pass myself off as any kind of expert, but uh, you learn a lot by doing. And uh, if you don't have a sailboat yourself, you know, come along with us as we learn and kind of figure out what it is we like about sailing, what we like about sailboats the most. And uh, yeah, see where our journey takes us. And if you happen to be in the market for a new shirt and you want to rep a logo that basically is all about celebrating the feeling of being offshore and sailing, uh, consider stopping by our website and picking up a hat or a t-shirt or a hoodie. And if you like it, send us a picture of yourself and we'll feature it right here in our Merch Hall of Fame. Uh, just our way of saying thank you to our YouTube sailing family. We really appreciate the support and it's super cool to see people just out in the world uh, repping our logo. It's, uh, it's something we really, really love and enjoy. So that wraps it up. Till next time, fair winds everybody, and we'll see you in a few weeks. Bye.